Welcome to this brief tutorial brought to you by Sotara University. This video is not intended as a substitute for training and is only to provide an overview to getting started with Phoenix NLME. It will give you an overview of the Phoenix interface and demonstrate some common tasks in building a population analysis using NLME. The data comes from the 1992 study of Theophylline Kinetics. The drug was administered orally to 12 subjects and serum concentrations were measured at 10 points per subject. First, we will import and then visualize the data in a plot. A one compartmental model with first order absorption and elimination is proposed. The pharmacokinetic parameters to be estimated are the absorption rate constant, Ka, the volume of distribution, V, and the clearance rate constant, Cl. Lastly, we will briefly see how the model comparer aids in comparing different structural and residual error models using the various diagnostics and plots that Phoenix produces automatically. The data we are looking at is part of the installation and can be found along with others through the help menu. Selecting contents takes us to the online help, where we can open the maximum likelihood model examples. We will be using this Theophylline example. Both the completed project and the raw data is available. Note that there are many other worked examples, such as this one focused on using the graphical model editor. Remember that although this video will be using population data, the Phoenix model can also fit individual profiles. Let's return to Phoenix. When first opened, the workspace is empty. To get started, one can either load an existing project or create a new project. In this tutorial, we will create a new project and import some data. It is recommended to always rename a project. We can import data through the file menu. As mentioned in the help, the completed project is also available in this examples folder. However, we are going to build the analysis up from the beginning. Open the folder supporting files that was installed with Phoenix. Then select theop.csv and click open to import. Within this import wizard dialog, we can tell Phoenix how the file was structured. Since there were no unit rows or other special formats in this file, I can click finish to import the data. Units were not supplied in the file, so I'll enter them using information from the publication. The dose was normalized to milligrams per kilogram. Time should be in hours. Yobs, that is concentration, was recorded in milligrams per litre. And body weight was recorded in kilograms. One other thing to note on this import is that missing values were indicated by a period or dot in the original workbook. Right clicking on a worksheet in the object browser is the simplest way to start your analysis because one can then select the Send To menu item, which exposes all the possible workflow functions available. Let's first select a simple XY plot to visualize the data, resulting in an XY plot being placed in the workflow as well as linking the input dataset. The setup panel is at the heart of Phoenix's flexibility, since column names and datasets need not match the workflow object and can be updated at any time. Note also, that we can toggle a view of the source data on and off. Mapping XID as group makes it the profile identifier in the plot. Map the time column as X and the observed concentrations to Y. Then click on the green arrow to execute. The plot can be easily formatted by selecting options in the lower panels tree. For example, changing the Y axis to a log scale. Let's start building our model. Return to the data folder and select the original worksheet. And again, right click and choose Send To. And select Maximum Likelihood Models under the Modeling category. Generally, Phoenix indicates mandatory inputs in orange. Map XID to ID. Because the column name matches, time is already mapped and we will map the concentration Yobs to Cobs. Note there is a warnings tab displayed. This can help you if your mappings are incomplete. It tells us that the input of dose A1 is not yet mapped. 
we can map it in the main mappings panel. With the warnings now gone, let us return to the structure tab. Currently, the model is defined as a one compartment with IV administration and the residual error is assumed to be additive. We can see a graphical representation of this by selecting Model under Setup. The core model statements are displayed here and we can change them to differential equations by unchecking closed form. Since the drug was dosed orally, the absorption should be changed to extravascular. The model structural code is automatically created under the statements column. Currently the dose is going directly to compartment A1. As I change the absorption to extravascular, the dose point will indicate that the dose is now going to compartment AA. Watch carefully to see how the selection made here automatically updates the dose point in the code. As well as in the graphical representation where the dose point is indicated by a blue pin. The dose point is now linked to compartment AA. The code also reflects this, so it will need to be remapped. The warnings tab also highlights this. So we will return to the main mappings panel. With the mappings complete, let's consider initial estimates. The default volume estimate of 1 is under predicting concentrations, suggesting it should be smaller than the default volume estimate of 1 is under predicting concentrations, suggesting it should be smaller than 1. Now that we know that the dose was body weight normalized, and Cmax is around 10 mg per litre, an estimate of 0.4 litres per kilogram does not seem unreasonable. Returning to the model, we can try an initial estimate of 0.4 for volume. and we can select Overlay to see all profiles. The predicted curves from these initial estimates immediately update. The peak is now a little closer to the observed points, but clearance still looks far too fast. Let's try a value 10 times smaller, and see how it looks on a semi-log plot. The predicted curves now look close enough. Click the blue arrows to ensure these updated values are used as initial estimates during fitting. Let's check this by clicking on the Parameters tab, and within there, Fixed Effects, where we see our modified initial estimates. These can also be read from other worksheets by linking them to the parameters input. And as before, click the green arrow to execute. The NLME Job Status window opens and shows how the estimates are changing with each iteration. It can be closed at any time or upon completion. After execution, the focus automatically moves to the Results tab. Notice, since the correct units were entered to the input data, the result estimates from model fitting are also given with the appropriate units. The Phoenix model produces quite a lot of output, so using the filter box to find the results of interest is useful. Typing IP has reduced my view to plots that are labelled with IPRED. Pop DV and iPred against time shows the overall fit, which looks okay, but perhaps a different error model might improve it. In a single dose study, this plot will look the same as iPred versus time after dose. So we can help ourselves in reviewing these plots by setting the y axis to a log scale. Double click on the plot name to edit. This formatting as semi-log will also be retained for any copies we make of this final model object. Let's check the other plots of residuals by typing res in the filter. The weighted residuals plotted against individual prediction concentrations look to have a slight fanning towards the higher concentrations. And when plotted against time, the residuals are largest around Tmax. I want to try a different error model. So I will first rename this model as 1COMADD and then right click to copy it. To repaste it in the object browser, a workflow must first be selected. Let's rename this copy 1COMMULT. Before we change the error model, let's update the initial estimates under the parameters tab and select the sub-tab Fixed Effects. Note that the final estimates from the last run can be accepted individually using the blue arrows 
or all at once using the Accept All button. Return to the Structure tab and change the residual error model to multiplicative. Note that we see the statements in the code update immediately after a selection change. And the initial estimate automatically changes to 0.1, analogous to a 10% error. Again, click the green arrow to execute the new model. The conversions plots displayed here are one of the other diagnostics NLME automatically provides. One for minus two LL and each structural parameter. Let's insert the model comparer object as a useful tool to speed up our assessment. This can be used to compare all NLME models run in population mode. A summary of the model's lineage, properties and goodness of fit diagnostics is shown on the setup screen. The models of interest can be chosen. Note that the minus two LL and AIC already suggest multiplicative gives a slightly better fit. One can also select which plots to compare side by side. Then click Execute as usual. Select the Theta worksheet to compare the final parameter estimates. The final estimates and the CV percents are similar for both models. Let's compare the plots. Seeing the goodness of fit plots side by side makes it easier to spot trends and differences. Let's return to the object browser to make a copy of the multiplicative model. We will rename the copied model to describe that it will have a T lag. Let's now take a look at the schematic model representation under setup, which will also update automatically as we add the T lag. Let's take a quick look at editing the model graphically. Quite complicated models can be built up graphically, and remember there are further examples in the help of how to add extra compartments, simultaneous IV and oral dosing, and so forth. Now, the options in the lower panel relate to whatever is selected in the diagram, currently AA, so we can see that the option T lag is checked. Let's take a look at the C OBS object, where we can try setting a different residual error model of Poisson by setting power to 0.5. With a Poisson error model now set, let's move to Parameters and the sub-tab Fixed Effects to check that we have the latest parameter estimates. The last run's final estimates can be accepted with a single click. T-lag wasn't in the previous model, but we can guess that something under 15 minutes might be more appropriate. With the structural model defined, we might also want to consider possible covariates. Phoenix makes it very convenient to add those from any unused columns in your dataset. In this example, only body weight remains unused in the dataset. So we will just add that. One can easily center on a number, perhaps from literature, or use the automatically generated mean or median from the current dataset. Note that at this point we are only requesting diagnostic plots of ATAS against weight. It is not currently included in the model. Also, if you want to develop your model beyond the built-in or graphical options, you can edit it further in textual mode. This replaces the model image with the actual Phoenix modeling language code, also known as PML. It is an intelligent editor with debug tools to show you syntax errors on the general tab. For now, let's return to the graphical mode. The read-only model text tab is always available and displays the full code. It is a great help in learning and understanding the syntax. There is also a plots tab that allows one to control which output plots are generated. After execution, we see that adding T lag changes the estimates, particularly for KA. Let's add this model to the comparer. The minus two log likelihood already looks much better for T lag. And the TLAG model's diagnostic plots look much better too, with smaller residuals. I want to make a copy of the TLAG model to show you some of the other run options.
let us take a look at the pop covariate plots we requested in this last model. They can help guide you in choosing likely covariates. However, in this case, the dose was normalized for body weight already, so it's probably not a good choice. However, in order to show you how you could consider these covariates in the model, let us select the parameters tab. In the sub tab of structural, where you can simply click yes to include any covariates. The code snippet shows how it has been implemented and a variety of parameterizations are supported. You can of course add your own in textual mode. This facilitates selecting the most probable combination of covariates with several run options. Stepwise covariate search run is easily set up. Through this run mode, you can define the criteria for both forward and backward testing of covariates. See also there are other run modes covering bootstrapping and visual predictive check. Again, check the examples in the help. Phoenix also makes it easy to select and use different algorithms depending on which is most suitable for the dataset under analysis. MPI configuration is done by the Phoenix installer at the time of installation and allows you to most efficiently use all the cores of your local processor or indeed send it to a remote grid for processing. In certain circumstances, you may want to change the methods of standard error calculations. Also, in addition to the currently visible options, some more advanced settings can be changed here. This option to add a table is useful when you would like to request a richer output than the original observed data. One can request explicit times or define a sequence. Remember that PML is case sensitive and syntax errors will be indicated in red. An output data point can also be requested whenever a covariate was set, a dose given, or an observation taken. And variables is where we request the output we would like to see. For example, C for predicted concentrations. We also have the input options tab providing features that support different data structures, like additional doses, modeling at steady state, and using actual calendar date times. Lastly, let's take a quick look at adding your own secondary parameters, which is a sub tab under parameters. This is quite straightforward. Enter the name of the parameter you want to create. Phoenix will indicate in red text if there is an issue with your syntax. So when entering your definition, remember that the Phoenix modeling language is case sensitive. In this case, Clearance uses a lowercase l in the code. Re-executing the model gives a sheet of these secondary parameters in the results. And table one contains the richer predicted output we requested. I hope you found this free video useful. Please feel free to watch it again whilst replicating the examples yourself. You can find further examples through contents in the online help and for more structured learning and certification, you can continue your training through Satara University's courses that cover both scientific and software-specific topics. Mm -hmm.